All right. Uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, or uh, good evening, depending on when you are, where you are. Uh, my name is Ali Khatib, and I'm a postdoc at uh, Zev Nice Lab at Sanford Borham Prep Cancer Center here in San Diego, California. Uh, I would like to begin by thanking the Science Abroad Committee for the opportunity to share my research with you today. It's a pleasure to be part of this uh, organization. Uh, today, I will be discussing a, a study that was published recently in Nature Communication, where we identified the ubiquitin ligase like RNA5 as a key player in acute myeloid leukemia development. So I will be presenting today about three components. Uh, one of them is ubiquitin like is RNA5. Uh, the second component is about RBB4, the epigenetic regulator that we identified as RNA5 substrate, and uh, how these two components uh, regulate the sensitivity of AML cells to histone deacetylase inhibitors. Just a brief introduction about the disease. So acute myeloid leukemia is a heterogeneous hematological cancer characterized by the accumulation of somatic mutation in immature myeloid cells. This mutation alters the cell renewal proliferation and uh, differentiation capabilities of the cells. And these immature cells eventually, they expand in the bone marrow, peripheral blood, and other tissue, resulting in uh, impaired hematopoiesis and bone marrow failure. Approximately one third of ML patients, uh, they fail to achieve complete remission induction to chemotherapy and relapse occurs frequently in uh, those patients who do enter remission. Uh, the survival rate of ML is around 30%, so there is an unmet need for better ML therapies. How is ML treated? Uh, unfortunately, aggressive remission induction chemotherapy is still the standard care of ML since the 1970s. So uh, more research need to be done to facilitate the development of more effective therapies. So in our lab, we are studying several cellular pathways that are deregulated in cancer and which underlie tumor cell ability to adjust to harsh conditions. And one of them is a ubiquitin proteasome system, which is a major pathway for targeted protein degradation. Uh, ubiquitination is carried out by the sequential activity of E1, E2, and E3. And one of the E3 ligases that we study in the lab is RNA5. It's ring finger protein 5. It's an endoplasmic reticulum associated E3 ligase. RNA5 is a, a, is a small protein around 17 kilodalton. It's uh, conserved from worm fly to human, and it has a transmembrane domain which anchor RNA5 to the AR membrane. Work from our lab and other labs showed that RNA5 is implicated in the AR associated degradation machinery and the AR stress response. So it basically contributed to the uh, clearance of misfolded proteins. It is uh, involved in glutamine metabolism, intestinal inflammatory disorders, and we have uh, recently shown that RNA5 is also implicated in anti tumor immunity and gut microbiome regulation. So why studying RNA5 in ML? We first uh, actually started by analyzing uh, uh, RNA-seq data sets for various cancer cells based on the Cancer Cell Line Encyclopedia. And we found that RNA5 expression is actually uh, very high in leukemia cell lines compared with other cancer cells. So here you can see that the highest expression of RNA5 is found in leukemia cell lines, CML, TLL, and DML cell lines compared with other cancer cells. And of course, we confirmed this outcome at the protein levels comparing the protein levels of RNA5 in AML, CML cell lines compared with other cancer cells. And in collaboration with the Scripps and the Anderson Cancer Center here in La Jolla and Rambam Hospital in Israel, we assess the clinical relevance of RNA5 and we confirm that RNA5 is, is highly expressed in patient of AML compared with the blood of normal uh, from healthy donors. Stratifying these patients based on high, low RNA5 showed that the AML patients with the high RNA5 expression, they have poor prognosis. So we next ask whether RNA5 has any function in AML, uh, and uh, we did simple experiment by knocking down RNA5 using different shRNA, and we found interestingly that leukemia cells are subjected to RNA5 knockdown, they have reduced proliferation. Uh, we tested this in different cell lines in different shRNA, and we confirmed this outcome also by CRISPR analysis, showing here uh, two different guide RNAs targeting RNA5 and control guide RNA targeting granula, and those cells transduced with the guide RNA targeting RNA5, they have uh, reduced proliferation. And besides cell line, we also tested this in uh, PDXs, uh, patient derived uh, xenograft, and we showed that uh, these cells subjected to RNA5 knockdown, they have reduced uh, variability compared with the control cells. 
We next ask whether RNA5 is also required for the growth of leukemia in vivo. So we use the human AML xenograft UNI37 uh, cell line. It's a human cell line that express luciferase and uh, we transduce these cells with inducible uh, control uh, vector or SHRNA5 injected IV these the cells to the mice and we followed leukemia development. And uh, strikingly, we observed that mice injected with RNA5 knockdown, they have delay in leukemia and eventually these mice uh, significantly survived longer than the control mice which suggesting that RNA5 is required for the growth of leukemia in vitro and in vivo. And to understand the mechanism underlying RNA5 contribution to, to leukemia, we first uh, uh, performed transcriptomic analysis to look at gene expression profile using RNA-seq. And at the same time, we performed also mass spectrometry to identify RNA5-bound proteins. So for the first analysis, we performed RNA-seq in three AML cell lines sub subjected to RNA-5 knockdown. And to our surprise, we actually observed that there is a huge change in gene expression upon RNA-5 knockdown in these cells, which was quite surprising to us because RNA-5 is not known to affect gene expression. Uh, most of those genes were implicated in apoptosis and cell cycle, which uh, are uh, consistent with the phenotype that we see upon RNA-5 inhibition. And here you can see induction of uh, genes that are implicated in apoptosis and CTKN1A, which is the cell cycle. Um, inhibitor P21. Uh, looking at the mass spec, we identified around 65 protein that bind to RNA5. Some of them were ERAD machinery and chaperones, which RNA5 is part of this machinery. So this was uh, uh, expected. But we looked for a protein that could explain the changes in gene expression that we observed upon RNA5 inhibition. So we looked if there is any a transcription factor that bind to RNA5 or any epigenetic regulator. And we found only one that is called RBB4 here. So we decided to focus on RBB4 for this reason. And uh, for the second reason was that we, uh, if we analyze AML uh, patient samples, TCGA, we observed that there is a negative correlation between RBB4 and the genes that we identified to be regulated by RNA5 in our rna seq So that suggests that RNA5 positively regulate the function of RBB4 in leukemia. So what is RBB4? It's a core histone binding uh, subunit. It's component of the uh, HTAC complex, CAF1, NORD complex, and BRC2. And it basically uh, it acts as a transcription of repression by promoting histone acetylation and methylation. We confirmed using our patient cohorts that uh, RBB4 is also overexpressed in patient samples compared with the healthy donors, similar to RNA5. And we uh, showed that uh, based on TCGA data that RNA5 is RBB4, sorry, overexpression is also have a poor prognosis in AML patients compared with the low expressing group. And if RNA5 is positively regulating RBB4 function, we would expect to see a similar phenotype of RBB4 and RNA5 inhibition in leukemia. And indeed, that's the case because if we knock down RBB4 in leukemia, independent of RNA5, we also observe that there is a decreased uh, cell proliferation similar to RNA5. And we also confirm this outcome in vivo using the same model that we used RNA5. RBB4 is also required for the growth of AML in vivo. So then we uh, did a bunch of biochemistry. We validated the interaction between RNA5 and RBB4 and leukemia cell lines. We indeed show that RBB4 is ubiquitinated by RNA5 wild type, but not dengue mutant, which is uh, catalytically inactive. And this is delta CT, which lacks a C-terminal membrane domain of RNA5, uh, suggesting that those are, are required for the ubiquitination of RBB4 by RNA5. Surprisingly, we found that RBB4 uh, stability is not affected by RNA5, which means that RNA5 is not targeting RBB4 for degradation. So we were interested to uh, identify the type of ubiquitination that is induced on RBB4. And to this end, we used the different ubiquitin mutants that are actually uh, uh, mutated in all lysines. They have only one lysine that is available for ubiquitination. And we found that only when we overexpress K29 ubiquitin, we observe that RNA5 is able to ubiquitin RBB4, which suggests that RB, RNA5 is inducing K29 ubiquitination on RBB4. Uh, finally, we found that this ubiquitination on RBB4 is actually required to the recruitment of RBB4 to the genes that we identify in the RNA seq to be regulated by RNA5. So we perform chip analysis here, and you could uh, see that upon RNA5 knockdown, there is less recruitment of RBB4 to the genes that we identify in the RNA seq to be induced by RNA5. And this uh, uh, less induction of RBB4 was uh, uh, reflected by an increased acetylation, as uh, shown here, HDK9 acetyl, which are indicative of induction of gene expression. 
So finally, we uh, screened for any synergistic effect between RNA5 inhibition and epigenetic uh, drug uh, combination. We wanted to see if there's any synergy between uh, epigenetic drug uh, or epigenetic compounds and RNA5 since RBB4 is implicated in epigenetic regulation. And to this end here, we screened uh, around 261 epigenetic compounds. We added them to RNA5 inhibition uh, cells and control cells, and we did find around 50 hits that actually induced more cell death in RNA5 knockdown cells compared with the control cells. And among the top hit were HTAC inhibitors. And we decided to focus on HTAC inhibitors since RBB4 is known to be part of the HTAC complex. And we confirmed this outcome, showing here that indeed a knockdown of RNA5 is actually synthesized the cells to HTAC inhibitors. We tested these in different cell lines, different shRNAs. And you can appreciate here the difference in IC50 between control cells to the uh, shRNA5 cells. And similar to RNA5, RBB4 was also actually synthesizing the cells to HTAC inhibitors, suggesting that both are working in the same pathway. And we confirmed this also using primary patient samples, AML, AML patient samples. Um, we selected four samples, two that express low levels, two that express high levels, and we showed that uh, AML samples with the low expression of RNA5, they respond better to HTAC inhibitors. And eventually, AML patients that they have downregulation of both RNA5 and HTAC pathway, they have better prognosis, which suggesting that targeting both RNA5 access and HTAC pathway would be lethal for, for AML. Um, that's it. To summarize, we identified ERAD independent role for RNA5 here, which uh, demonstrate that its control of RBB4 is uh, constitute an epigenetic path with the driving AML. And uh, upon RNA5 inhibition, there is less uh, uh, ubiquitination ketone and RBB4 that leads to less recruitment to the genes and less uh, induction of uh, the genes that affect the AML growth and uh, response to HTAC inhibitors. And hopefully we can stratify AML patients to HTAC inhibitors based on uh, RNA5 and RBB4 levels. Um, I would like to thank my supervisors, Evronai, uh, and the lab, uh, the Ronai lab members, or all uh, collaborators here at SPP, Scripps, NCI, and the Tech Union and Rambam. And uh, thank you for listening. I'll be happy to take any question. Uh, thank you very much, Ali. Um, we have um, time for one question. Uh, Can from I ask the crowd a question the from the panel? Yes, please. Who is this? The name is Ethan uh, Gross. Gross. Yes, now I see you. Please. Hi, Ali. Very Hi. nice talk. Can I see you? Uh, Let me see one person. Here I can see you. Yeah, Ali, yeah. very nice. Did you think about you checking in mice what happens in an AML model with the inhibitors and uh, RNA5 maybe knockout or what happens in vivo? So in vivo, we tested this actually. That RNA5 inhibition also uh, led to delay in leukemia as showed it uh, here in the slides. So ah, by... Okay. Yes. So what I'm asking is what happens with an HDAC inhibitor? Right, right. So here you can see RNA5 by itself was actually sufficient to inhibit leukemia. That's why okay. we actually started already with a combination, but okay. we had it by itself was sufficient. So in vivo, we don't need RNA5 in combination with HDAC. It was sufficient mm -hmm. by itself to inhibit. Okay, thank you. Yeah.